you've got a violin in your hand, you're on stage, all is good, but you're feeling like you could use a friend. This part of the song needs more than one violin in it. What do you do? In this week's video, we will talk about how to make your violin approximate an entire string section. Hey everybody, Matt Bell with Electric Violin Shop. Welcome back to the From Classical to Radical series, where we're teaching classically trained violinists and cellists, shout out, to easily enter the world of amplified music. In the classical world, there's never any shortage of violins. I mean, you can't swing your bow without hitting at least three of them. And why is that? Because multiple violins playing together sounds really good. But your band didn't hire multiple violinists, they hired you. And if you need to sound like more than one violinist, there are options. One option would be to play more than one note at a time, which is great. If you can do that in tune, or if you can play multiple rhythms at the same time, that's fantastic. But there's another way to make it sound like you're playing more than one note at a time, and that's to use a harmonizer. A harmonizer is an effect that can split your tone, let your original note come through, and then a second note that can be some specified interval away from your note can be played along with you. Intelligent harmonizers can be used. You can tell them what key you're in, what split you want. Sometimes they have multiple splits and then you can play along in that key and the harmonizer does the work of playing the other notes. This is really handy and really nice, but you have to be careful. It is entirely possible for you to play a note that is in the chord and the harmonizer to play a note that is not in the chord. So you will want to sort of think out your parts ahead of time and make sure that you know what you're going to do and make sure the harmonizer is going to cooperate with you. Also, you want to make sure your intonation is really good. If you play a note that's a little out of tune, the harmonizer is not going to know what to do. A lot of harmonizers sort of have a bit of a synthetic sound to them. And if that's what you're going for, it's great. I use this all the time, but only when I really need that particular sound. Also be sure to check your harmonizer with double stops. Sometimes they work well with double stops, sometimes they don't. Because using intelligent harmonization for thirds, fourths, fifths can be a little bit tricky, Another option is to use octaves. The octaver doesn't care what key you're in, because if you're playing a note that's within the key, the octave is also going to be within the key. Uh, it also means that you can generally play double stops depending on the octaver, and they are going to work just fine within that octave, and it's going to sound pretty big. We can play multiple notes at a time. We can use a harmonizer to give us some harmonies, or we can use an octaver to spread our sound out. But besides playing multiple notes at a time, what is it that makes more than one violin sound different than one violin? One issue is intonation. No matter how good two players are, they are never going to be mathematically perfectly in tune with each other. Two violinists playing at the same time will never have the same exact intonation. It's the same as if you play an open A string and then put your fourth finger down on a D string and play an A along with it. You can hear that mathematical difference that's happening there that spreads that note apart. So there are effects that you can use to simulate this. One is called detune. And what detune does is it splits your signal again, allows your true tone to pass through, and then the split, it just detunes at just a couple of cents one way or the other to make it sound like there's more than one violin playing. In a lot of cases, you can adjust the amount of detune. You just have to sort of play with it to get the, uh, to get the sound that you're looking for. If you detune too much, it sounds like the second violin's playing out of tune. If you don't detune enough, it sounds like there's not two of you. The second effect we can use is called chorus. What chorus does, again, is splits your signal, allows your original signal to pass through, it waits a few milliseconds, and then it passes your signal through on a delay. The kicker here, though, is it uses an oscillator to modulate that time delay. So at the beginning of the oscillation, your time delay may be a few milliseconds, but then it's going to stretch that delay out and then it's going to push it back in. So you can decide how deep this oscillator is, how fast it is, and then how much you want that split tone that's pushing back and forth, how much of that you want mixed in with your tone. What happens when the oscillator uh, oscillates is that you actually get a small pitch variation, and that's because of the Doppler effect. When you hear a train go by, he goes, Ehh. That's because the sound is moving away from you and the Doppler effect actually makes that change pitch. So it's essentially the same thing that happens in a chorus is you get this 
pitch variation that happens because that pitch is being pushed forward and backwards in time. So there's a couple of different things going on in a course. One is that your pitch is being blended with a slightly time delayed version of itself. And the other thing is that you're hearing the pitch shift back and forth as the oscillation time moves in and out. So again, you have to play with this to get the exact um, flavor that you're looking for. So you can hear just a sort of a little bit of wave, maybe push, maybe it sounds like there's maybe a second violin there. I also happen to have a pedal that I really like that has a couple of features that I uh, can't live without. Uh, that's why I have two of them. It's the old Boss HR2 Harmonist pedal. It's discontinued, but it's pretty readily available on the used market. They're pretty inexpensive. What I like about it is that if you set two harmonies the same, it has two splits. If you set two harmonies the same, it gives you one harmony and the other one is slightly detuned. So I've got mine both on plus one octave. So I've got my pitch that comes through, I've got plus one octave that comes through, and then plus one octave slightly detuned. It makes my violin sound a whole lot like a string section, especially when it's bedded down in a mix. Deep inside a mix, that sounds really nice. It's pretty convincing uh, when you're going for that orchestra sound. There's sort of one kicker. The pedal does have a slight amount of latency in it, as a lot of octavers do. So if you want to really rip on something, maybe that's not the, the right application of the pedal. But if you're playing long tones and, or you're playing slow tones, it's really easy to make this pedal work for you. And you just sort of, with any effect, you really just have to sort of figure out what the quirks are of that effect are, and then you've got to learn how to make those work for you. You got to treat your effect like it's its own instrument and it sort of has its own uh, pluses and minuses and its own little quirks and uh, abilities and disabilities. Also important is not to get too worked about how these effects sound by themselves in isolation in your practice room. It's important to think about how your violin is going to sound in a mix. Sadly, the violin is not always the loudest thing in the mix. You find that a lot of things that don't really light your fire when you're in your practice room work really well in a mix, especially if they're bedded down. If you're just sort of playing some pads, if you're playing some fills, if you're playing some things that are just designed to maybe add texture to the sound that the band is playing, you'd be surprised what you can get away with and how good something is going to sound in a mix. So again, it's all about experimenting. It's all about sort of learning how this is going to work. This is going to be a process. You're going to sort of start developing these tones in your practice room. You're going to take them on the stage. Uh, it's a good idea to record what the band is doing, what your, what your uh, instrument sounds like in the mix, and that way you can sort of come back to your practice room and tweak things out. Man, I had a little too much effect there. I didn't really have enough here. Maybe my EQ wasn't right. So these are all things that uh, it's going to be a process. It's taken me years and years to sort of figure out what's going to sound when I have something in my practice room that sounds a certain way, how's that going to work in a mix? So thank you guys for watching. Uh, be sure to click on the subscribe button so you can be notified every time we put up a new video. And uh, as always, you can reach us at electricviolinshop.com. Shoot us a, uh, an email at info at electricviolinshop.com. You can call us at the shop. You can find us on the website, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're all over social media. So uh, thank you guys. Please put any questions you have in the comments and we'll do our best to answer those.